How's it going everybody? Today is just going to be a short, simple video showing you three different ways to splice wires together. Now, whenever you're working on your DIY projects, there are plenty of times that you run into needing to splice wires together. Everything from adding extra outlet boxes to running the wire for a new light in your shop, or as you may have seen in one of my recent videos, where I had to splice a wire because the plug wouldn't fit through the hole in a lemonade jar. Regardless of why you need to splice wires together, hopefully this video will end up helping you out. The three different ways that I'm gonna be showing you today are going to be soldering, heat shrink tube, and wire nuts. Starting off, we have the most simple method using wire nuts. These wire nuts are super cheap, easy to find, and you can buy them in huge packs so that if you're working on a bigger project like setting up a shop and running all the electric wires for it, these will really come in handy and save you a whole lot of time. So we're gonna take this power wire because this is what you would most commonly use wire nuts for and clip it. Then we're going to use a knife or some other tool to split the end. And we're obviously going to do this on both sides because we're working on splicing. All right, so now we have both ends that are split into three different wires. Let's go ahead and strip these and then we'll continue. As you can see, I've stripped off the gray outer coating to reveal the black and white inner coating. That's because we need to be able to identify which side is positive and which side is negative before stripping it down to copper. Now with the wires fully stripped, we're ready to bring in the wire nuts. We'll start with the black side, which is the negative side. We'll put these two together, and I'm going to use some pliers to twist them together. Once you have the twist started, take your wire nut and insert those ends and then screw the wire nut down onto the twisted wire. This is where wire nuts really save you a lot of time and effort because you don't have to do any complicated soldering, any taping or masking. All you're doing is simply connecting the wires together with these little things. It doesn't take long, it's super simple, really easy to do. All right, so now that we have all three different wires connected together nice and strong, we can actually open these up and this would be where the line would be ran, and that's splicing together a wire using wire nuts. Now, on to the second method. This is heat shrink tube. Now, to be entirely clear, heat shrink tube isn't actually doing the connecting, as you'll see, but not only does this heat shrink tube protect the splice itself from water and outside elements, it also does hold the wire together keeping it from being pulled apart very easily. So let's show you how to use this. For this demonstration, I'm going to be showing you how to cut and splice this type of wire, the more common power cord, which would be something for a lamp, or in this case, a pump. And they have a lot smaller wires that are not solid copper. So I cut the wire. Now I'm going to strip it the same way I did the other one, just being more careful because this is smaller wire. Now, as you can see, these right here don't have the same inner coating as a bigger wire does. So the way to tell the difference between the positive and negative is to just make sure that you're connecting the side that matches. As you can see right here, one side of the cord has lettering on it, the other side doesn't. While the marking might vary from cord to cord, one thing that is fairly consistent is that one side of the cord will be marked either with a color or lettering or numbering, and the other side will always be blank. As long as you match these two up to each other, they should be fine. So this side right here has marking, and so does this side. So we're going to start by connecting these two sides right here. In order to do that, we have to strip back the cord a little bit further. We're going to take the heat shrink tube and slide the cord through it. And then we take these two ends, put them side to side, and then twist them together very tightly. Once we have them nice and twisted together, we're going to fold it over. And with it folded over, we're going to lay the line out flat again. With the line laid out like this, we can take the heat shrink tube and slide it down to cover up that splice. So this is where the actual heat element of the heat shrink tube comes in. For my situation, I'm going to be using a torch. If you're just getting started, you definitely don't wanna do this. You'll probably end up burning something, melting it too much, or something like that. Start by using a hair dryer or a heat gun or something that will provide just a light amount of heat. It doesn't take much to shrink it down. So we applied the heat to this side, it shrunk down. Now we're going to give it a minute to cool, make sure that it's tight. And while that's cooling, we're gonna go ahead and work on the other side. So there you have it. This is using the heat shrink method. 
This splice will stay together nice and strong and the heat shrink tube will keep it safe from the elements. Now it's time to move on to method three, soldering. Now soldering is obviously one of the more complicated of these three processes, but once you get the hang of it, it's not that big of a deal. All you need is some solder and a soldering iron. Doesn't have to be super fancy, doesn't have to be super expensive. Solder and soldering iron, that's all you really need. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using the same cord from the pump as the heat shrink demonstration. And since you've already seen me strip it down, I won't bore you with the details. Now, whenever it comes to soldering, yes, it's the most complicated, but if you do it right, it actually offers the best splice of the three different methods. Because what you're doing is you're actually fusing the metal together, which will hold a lot stronger than tape or anything like that. On top of that, given that you're going to have to cover the solder splice anyway, you might as well go ahead and combine soldering with the heat shrink method to make the very strong, very protected splice that's the best out of the three. So. With the wire spliced down and separated, I'm going to go ahead and put my heat shrink tube on. And now to connect these ends, I'm actually going to take this wire and take these little strands and squish them together. So what you're trying to do is twist the wires together lengthways rather than side by side with the other methods. Once you have them connected, you get your soldering iron nice and hot, you get your solder, and start by heating up the wire itself. Let the soldering iron make contact with the wire for a few good seconds before you apply the solder because you need the copper wire to be hot in order to fully accept the solder. Now you lightly contact the wire with the solder. And as you can see, the solder will seep into the copper wire, bonding it together. While that one cools, let's do the other one. And once both sides have had plenty of time to cool down, you'll find that they are very strongly connected together. So we're ready to slide the heat shrink tube down and then as before, apply heat. Now, once everything is cooled down properly, this right here is gonna be the best out of the three methods because the metal is completely fused together. The heat shrink tube keeps it safe from the elements and overall, it looks nice and clean. All right, so there's the basic three methods. You have the simple, fast, and cheap method. You have the simple, fast, and cheap, but also waterproof and a little more protected. And you have the somewhat simple, somewhat cheap, somewhat fast method that is very strong and waterproof. Now, obviously there are plenty of other different methods that you could learn, but these three should at least give you a good head start. And yeah, that's about it. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, where it's just a quick, simple breakdown of some of the things that you'll run across while doing DIY projects, let me know in the comments below. If you like videos like these, let me know by hitting the like button. And if you wanna see more behind the scenes and stay up to date with upcoming projects, be sure to check out my Instagram. It's the same tag as my YouTube, Hope Streams and Duct Tape. You can find the link down below. And yeah, that's about it for today. Until I see you next time, stay happy, healthy, wealthy, and wise, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you later. <laughs> Bye.